Now to finish looking at computer components by talking about expansion cards. So an expansion card is some optional hardware that provides additional functionality when added to the computer. So the word expansion suggests you can improve what you've got by adding it, but they're not mandatory. So generally speaking, these will slot into what we call expansion slots. On the motherboard, usually PCI is the type of port we use. So here are a few PCI ports on a motherboard. The idea is you'll buy a graphics card, for example, and slot it in to these PCI slots, for example, and it will now work and expand and work with your other components. So these are optional. You add them quite simply in most cases, usually inside the computer, but they can be outside in a few cases as well. So let's start by talking about a couple of cards which add processing functionality. The most obvious one I've mentioned already is a graphics card. So a graphics card can be quite fancy looking like this one. They can be quite plain as well. As you get more expensive, they tend to add lights and loads of fans and stuff like this, get quite bulky. But you can see the PCI slot poking out at the bottom. Now a graphics card, what it does is process images and or videos, so graphics, so that they can be displayed on a screen. Now you can't really see in this image the input and output bit, but there will be some ports poking out the back, things like HDMI, VGA, ports which would connect up to a monitor. So the idea is the graphics card's job is to display stuff on the screen. You may not have a graphics card. You may just have a processor. So a graphics card on its own has a GPU. A GPU stands for graphics processing unit as opposed to a CPU, central processing unit. Every computer must have a CPU, but not every computer has a GPU. So the GPU in a graphics card is optimized for graphics. It's really good at processing graphics. And so if you are doing quite heavy graphical tasks like gaming or editing or things like this, the GPU can speed up your performance. It can boost the CPU because it can handle a lot of the trickier graphical processing. That's why often expensive computers have got GPUs or graphics cards because it can improve performance at difficult tasks. But not every computer does. It might be built in to your processor. You might have integrated graphics where you don't need a dedicated graphics card. A similar expansion card is a sound card. So a sound card does the same job as a graphics card, just for sound, not graphics. So it'll process sound inputted or outputted to or from the computer. I guess there is one difference. A GPU will only deal with stuff coming out of the computer, but a sound card will have both input and output. Because for example, a microphone is an input device, it will go into the sound card, whereas a speaker is an output device, it will come out of the sound card. So again, usually this will be built in to either the CPU or often from motherboard. I haven't got a sound card, for example, it's built into my motherboard. But if you have got one, the CPU is able to delegate processing to the sound card. So it will take some workload off the CPU to give it, to delegate to the sound card. So again, having a graphics card and a sound card will boost performance if you are doing quite intensive tasks. So most of us don't need a sound card, but if you were a DJ or a music producer or somebody like that who is doing lots of stuff with sound, a sound card might help your performance. Now to go through three more, which are a little bit more simple, I suppose. So a network card, also called a NIC or network interface card, also called a network adapter or a wireless adapter, is a device which allows connection to a network. So if you want to connect up to a network, you've got to have a network card in your computer. Again, often it'll be built in. You won't need to have a separate one. This one here is a wireless one, but equally you could have a wired one with ethernet instead of the wireless antennas. A storage controller looks very basic and very simple. Hasn't got any ports usually, but a storage control, oh, I say, let me step back. Hasn't got any ports poking out. It has got ports on the actual card. So the actual card might have some SATA ports or similar storage ports because what it does 
is manage multiple storage devices. So if you want to if you want to have multiple devices, you might choose to have a storage controller to manage this process and connect up more devices. So this is often done to virtualize hardware and virtualize storage in particular. So if you've got say five hard drives, you could use a storage controller to virtualize to make it seem like you've only got one or a couple. So it can be used for things like RAID, you might have heard of, but just generally managing storage. And finally, we mentioned this in the last video, but Fiber Channel is another card. So Fiber Channel is a port, but also you can have a Fiber Channel card, which slots into your computer and allows you to use fiber optic cables directly with your computer. So usually this will be to connect your computer to storage. If you've got a server and want to connect it up to storage and you want to be really, really quick, you might use Fiber Channel because fiber optic is really, really fast, faster than other technologies. So using it might speed up your transfer times, especially over quite a long distance.